Ridge, got to a nice bit of open bush, and um, there's a stag going pretty well on the other side, so I was working my way trying to figure out how it's going to get to him without winding him. And I'd just given a roar of a little clearing up there, just trying to see across to see where he was. He's sort of been a bit, a bit quiet, so just came down literally two minutes later, just dropped down into this nice bush, heard a crackle, and just looked, and the stag was coming straight in from this direction, and he just he got to about here, put a shot into him, and there he is. Go and check him out. We eight pointer, it'll do me. Bugger, did too. Gone through the antler. Bit of a shame. Ah oh, well. So, uh, yeah, brought in this guy from just up the ridge a little way. Um, I didn't actually know that he was here. So we had quite a grunty, sort of aggressive roar and he had a stick break and then looked down to see this flash of his animal coming straight through. Um, he was running and he was pretty pretty offended by what I obviously said. Um, so anyway, as he as he got onto the sort of the spur that I was on, he had to go under a, a low branch and he's powering up the hill. So I lined him up, it's probably only between sort of five and ten metres away. He's coming straight up. So I just put the crosshair straight on him, on his um, on the base of the neck type area. But as he came under that low hanging branch, he sort of tipped his head back like that. I managed to um, shoot him straight through the antler, which was against his body, and um, put him down, but a bit of a shame really. I mean, it's not a big head, but you know, antler's antler to me. And just luckily it's, it's a little bit a little bit weak, but I don't know. Maybe maybe there's some way I could strengthen that up. Just while I'm waiting for the meat to cool, I had a few muesli bars and thought, oh, I'll just go and check out the scene sort of where I shot him. And just sheer luck, I managed to find the fragment of antler that blew off. So, um, who knows, might be, able to, might be able to glue that back on somehow. Just, just for interest's sake, really. So that'll go on there. Good as new.
so I was just here filming that <coughs> car stamp that I found, that funky one. And I heard stag just sort of coming up from that way and I heard a sort of a just a couple of quiet little little groans and I knew he was close and I could smell him. Um, and then yeah, I tried to video him coming in. It's re really hard when you're trying to shoot and video as a one man band, but we got the result in the end. We got a little bit of scrappy footage. Could have done better if I was only focused on filming him and he was just on the other side of this root ball here when I shot him. So I'll just pace it out and um, we'll see. Oh, I bet it's about one, two. About three here. Where was he? About four. Roughly about five, he was standing just here. And I was just there. With my, my rifle and my hat is. So he just came right up here and then I fired and I'm not sure whether it hit him or what because he spun right at the second I fired. But then I pulled him up with another call and he's down anyway so we'll go and check him out. Can certainly smell him. Yeah, what is he? He's a bit more mature. He's a big old one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pointer. <laughs> bit uneven. Got a bit of a battle scar there from something. Thanks, big boy. Finishing shot was um, actually just in the back of the neck here. I could just see between some saplings, back of his neck as he was sort of heading away from me and so I took the shot at and just dropped him. First shot, or one of the first shot went through there. He's, he's a big boy, I don't know how old exactly but we'll get his jaw out and we'll wherever we look but it's got a bit of length to him I suppose. His coronary, his pedicles are sort of Average, so perhaps a middle aged stag. Thanks, big boy. What an experience! Stag that I was just roaring at. Um, it's going quite good, and I could hear him coming towards me. But just the little gut that I was in, so it had quite a big back eddy of wind, and I sort of knew that I'd be super lucky if I even got a glimpse of him. I was just hoping to film him, unless, um, unless he's quite a lot bigger than the one I've already shot. Well, I'm 
into the belly of the beast now. Uh, climbed up and got amongst them, sort of been in the middle of deer, stag wall. Um, I can smell stags, and I can hear animals, and just this bush isn't super open. So you gotta get really close. And I was just heading up, there's a stag wall in quite well. Unfortunately, I think he's winded me because the wind is just going back and forward and up and down. It's can't make up its mind. It's frustrating, but um, yeah, as I say, you just got to keep at it. I filmed that young stag. I think he's just a satellite off that one that was roaring quite well. Um, might have been a wee eight point or something. Um, it's quite cool to see him, but yeah, I was hoping to get it on the on the main boy there, but he, they just keep moving as well. I don't know if he's pushing hinds around or what, but. Um, yeah, they're just roaring and roaring well. They'll be going and going and pushing them, or, or moving along, and then just go quiet all of a sudden. And it's not just the ones that I've been after, they even sit everywhere. But I can hear them. They'll go well for a bit, and they'll die off. So, I'm not sure whether that fella winded me or, or what happened, but I might nip over the spur here. I mean, the prevailing wind will be quite horrible, but at least hopefully it'll be a bit more constant. And there is a stag roaring somewhere over there, so give it a go. Obviously heard me coming down the hill here and wanted to come and check me out. What have you been uh, Yeah, within 10 metres easy. <laughs> Funny little fella. Might wise him up for the future. There's that dry spot where that hind was bedded. I bloody I could see the rump for ages and I thought, oh yeah, there's a deer line down there, be ready. And it didn't move for quite a while. And I thought, ah, oh, geez, might be a dead one, maybe a stag to poke in the guts or something. And sure enough we get closer and closer and there's a bloody hind there just sitting there. Got really close to him, she took off. Could have shot her easily, but I was hoping for some footage, but yeah. Just a dry little bed there and she took off that way. I mean, I've, I've snuck up on some bedded deer before, but that's uh, that's a first for that. And that's sort of a bloody scenario. I just um, <coughs> get out of roar a little bit further up the hill and had a wee one ant and spiker come in. Could have shot him, but um, I was trying to get the camera on him. By the time I got the camera ready, he sort of had second thoughts and I saw him nervously moving away and I didn't get any footage. So uh, I carried on down the hill a little bit and then obviously got this hind and her yelling just up out of their bed. Again, sort of deer um, chest of a deer standing there through the vines and could have shot it at any time but sort of thought oh is it a stag or not if I was just meat hunting any other time of the year it would have been down it's a hind and a yearling and it looks like we've got them out of their beds um, it's pretty quiet over here a bit of a let down I thought there'd be a bit more stag action but perhaps no roaring nothing nearby but I'm holding out there I'm leaving all the non-target species at the moment so hopefully it pays off and um, 
a reward with a stag with a bit of luck. 